So on today's episode of Learning Unboxed, I am super excited because we are going to have a conversation with a kiddo that I have known now for, oh, I don't know, three, four, maybe years, uh, <laughs> longer than that. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about a student's journey, those big transition points um, that are always a, a big point of conversation in many schools and in many communities and, and in many families too. And these transition points are really super, super important as we sort of consider a student's journey. And so joining me today is my good friend, Riley Andrews. So Riley, thank you for joining us. No problem. It's my pleasure. So uh, just a bit of background for our listeners. So Riley, I met Riley when she was um, in the sixth grade. Um, and Riley found herself as a sixth grader um, having one of these big transition moments where she had gone from a private parochial school into a STEM school. Um, and that's not an easy transition. And the transition out of fairness to Riley from elementary into middle school or junior high, depending on where you are in the world, those, those are tough transitions anyway. And I would imagine, uh, Riley, that that it's particularly tough when you go to a completely different school. So I want to start with just a little bit of conversation around sort of what was that like for you? But more importantly, share with us a little bit of the decision to, to go from one school to another. Why would you do that? Well, honestly, it wasn't exactly my choice to switch schools. Okay. I had told my, my mom had a lot to do with it because she, we, um, my private school was very expensive and since it's just my mom and me she was like we you can stay here for like your two more years but then you'll have to go to a public school because I couldn't we couldn't afford to go into the feeder school the mm -hmm. private feeder school so she was looking into it and she found metro and she was like, oh, this is interesting it's like a lottery type school and so she was like okay I'll go ahead and like put you in I had no idea she put me in <laughs> so <laughs> when she told me that my um fifth grade year my in the summer she was like when she said oh yeah you're gonna be switching schools this year I was not very pleased at all <laughs> I was in fact I was very angry because I was like I didn't even know what STEM was so I was like what do they do do they just like play on computers all day mm -hmm. and like do stuff like that and she was like, no, it's like, it's all about like sciences and math and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, oh, goody, <laughs> because math has never really been my strong suit. So I was very hesitant. And then um, actually going in, we actually took a tour in the summer, like right before, like two days before my, uh, the school year started. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, this place is interesting because it was a lot smaller mm -hmm. and it looked like an office building. And I was like, it had all the, I remember I fell in love with the chairs because we had like <laughs> these cool rolly chairs. I was like, wow, this is kind of cool. So I eventually got used to it, but sixth grade year was definitely very, very Mm -hmm. And and I met you, Riley, when you came. So the school that Riley's talking about is actually um, a partner school and a school and residence partner with the PASS Foundation. And we've talked about Metro School in this program many, many times. Um, but, you know, there there's part of it is because we have this fabulous access and this partnership um, with the school. So we get access to lots of, of, of students, lots of teachers, and, and we utilize a lot of opportunity, if you will, to experiment you know, we're not supposed to experiment on children, right, Riley? Um, <laughs> yeah. But we do experiment with children. And what I mean with the with part is in collaboration, very deliberately by design, you know, work with students to co-design and develop programming together. And so I met Riley because Riley, um, as a sixth grader, um, went from her metro school and then we had an after school STEM program called the Innovators Club, which we still uh, run in non COVID times. Um, mm -hmm. And it's a wonderful program. And the purpose of the program for our listeners is that we want to be able to have a small group of dedicated kiddos like Riley and her colleagues. Um, and we wanna be able to bring in 
program ideas. So in other words, if I was going to do a really cool either after school or summer program or an extension or maybe even something that will end up inside of a, of a classroom someplace, whether it's a STEM school or otherwise, but we want to design, develop, and field test these programs um, with real kids, with real teachers in a real learning environment. But more importantly, we want to make sure that the kids involved actually help us design appropriately. And so that was the environment in which I met Riley. And so Riley, could you talk with us just a little bit? You don't have to give, you know, a whole bunch of examples, but I know you participated in the years that you were in the Innovators Club um, mm -hmm. in a number of different of these pilot experiences. And, you know, you got to learn a variety of different things that hopefully were enhancing in the work that you were doing over in school, but oftentimes you got to, to try out and do some things that you aren't doing in school at all. So tell us mm -hmm. a little bit about why that experience was useful or valuable to you as you sort of make your way through middle school, because middle school is not easy for anybody. Well, I really, really liked Innovators Club. I liked all the people and I loved the teacher, Miss Ashley. She mm -hmm. was amazing. She still is amazing. <laughs> um, so we did a lot of stuff. Like I remember specifically this one time we did like a root, like it's a Goldberg type. I can't Rube remember. Goldberg, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> we did those. And I loved those because we had to like design them and we like drew them out and stuff and we had to get all the supplies and then we would test them and you'd get to see everyone's and I think that really helped with um design challenge at school at Metro because we have a lot of times you have to build models there mm -hmm. and you have to go through like the design process and like brainstorming and all, all that type of stuff so I was already kind of accustomed to it before like be, by being an innovators club before we even did design challenge at like the end of the year mm -hmm. so I was like oh I'm already a pro at this I don't <laughs> I don't need I don't need the teachers help as much as everyone else does so I thought that was really helpful and yeah so you are a fearless flyer because of the experience oh yeah it yeah. definitely definitely helped me and that's one of the, the primary intents of the program, you know, is to really make sure that we can build up or scaffold students and also to provide some supports. And you, you very bravely, and I want to thank you for, for bravely stating that math was one of the things that is not necessarily your strong suit. And it was a little bit scary for you. And I do remember this, right? Because one of the mm -hmm. things that we built into the Innovators Club, and that's not really what this, this piece of the program is about, but I really am hoping that you'll be able to sort of share how some of the scaffolded pieces that we built into the program are really sort of helping you with your dreams and your aspirations, which we're going to come to in just a minute. But let's talk a little bit about the math piece, because one of the things that we recognize that for students to really get the most out of the notion of being active designers inside of an experience or opportunity for students for themselves and for other students, is that we make sure that any of the things that you're uncomfortable comfortable or insecure or unsure about that we scaffold you to build that foundation to make it very, very solid. And so one of the things or one of the experiences that I, I know I witnessed Riley have repeatedly inside the program was working directly one on one or even in small groups with Miss Ashley, who she she referenced a minute ago, Ashley Price, who runs the Innovators Club program. And to get help with, with in, in Riley's case, with math, but whatever subject the students showed up with saying, hey, I need some help. There was a dedicated amount of time every day to ensure that you got the supports that you needed. And it was almost sort of a live wraparound tied to your ability then to co-create programming. So talk a little bit, because it was more than just tutoring, yes? Oh, yes, I think so. So pretty much it kind of, it kind of started, we called it like homework time or like that kind of thing. But I really feel like it was more than that because like by, it helped me with my homework for sure because. Right. We didn't <laughs> want any kid to go home with homework if we could help it, right? Because we want you to engage yeah. in your family, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So it helped with my homework for sure. But I think it definitely helped with like activities and like that we were doing that specific day and like the design process as a whole and like the type of the math side of like the engineering I guess mm -hmm. you could call it of like the activities we were doing because like 
it would make it so like so we did one activities we did was like minecraft and we had to like build like a whole building or whatever and sometimes you wouldn't like know how many blocks you need and you don't want to just like sit there and just keep pressing like add more add more so if you could like do the math in your head and type in like I need 24 blocks for the foundation or whatever then it made it a lot easier Mm -hmm. so that's just like a tiny thing but like I definitely think it helped like you said build that strong foundation Absolutely. And that's really important when you're in a school like the one that you're in, because many of the STEM schools, um, and this program is about more than just STEM schools, but we do talk about them a fair amount. Um, And a fair number of specialty schools, whether they're STEM or arts or others, they're they're often accelerated programs. And that is definitely the case. I saw (laughs) Riley's eyes for our listeners who are not watching on the video feed. Uh, Riley's eyes got really big. She's like, oh my gosh, yes, it's an accelerated (laughs) program. With the idea being that you can complete through um, a partially partially through middle school, but certainly in your first two years of high school, the goal is to get as many students as possible, completely finish with at least the majority, if not all, of your high school graduation requirements, those state requirements, so that as juniors and seniors, you can move into these accelerated career awareness pathways. And the idea there is that we want students, while they're still in high school, before the the stakes get too high, especially from a financial standpoint of paying for college and all these others, that you get to try potential careers out. um, So that when you actually do start taking college credit, um, that you you have a path and you've got a plan and you're ready to roll, right? And Mm -hmm. so Riley shared with me that she is very interested in health sciences and healthcare in particular. And I love this. She's already chosen her university, which we're not going to say because we're in the wrong state for that. Um, But (laughs) she'd like to go study pediatric uh, surgical nursing. Um, And that's, that's a, an ambitious um, pathway, right? But the acceleration (laughs) components, I wanna talk a little bit because again, we're back to talking about another one of these transitions because you moved from that middle school experience like many, many other kids, but you're in an accelerated program and now you're transitioning from middle school into high school into an early college high school at that. So let's talk a little bit about that transition point. It's much easier. You didn't change schools this time. It was a small school environment, however, the transition is still a fairly substantial one. So, so talk to us a little bit about that experience for you. What, what was tough about that? Let's start with the hard part and then we'll get to the fun stuff. Well, first I would like to say it is much easier being coming from the middle school side, going to the high school side, Mm -hmm. because I do not think that if I came from the school I was previously in straight to high school, I would survive (laughs) because it is very difficult and it chews you up and spits you out. It really, it really um, like filters through like the elite, I would like to say. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but it was very, it, it is very difficult. My freshman year going from eighth grade to freshman year wasn't super duper hard because the structure was the same and mm-hmm. my classes weren't super difficult yet. But um, I did notice a very big transition from uh, freshman year to this year because my classes are a lot harder. It's a lot more homework, a lot more studying time, which is kind of hard to balance, but I'm doing it. So I would say, and then you have like, you're trying, like you said, since it's very like fast paced, you have to like keep it moving. Like you don't want to sit on anything too long. So you got to get your stuff done. So I would say like trying to get my stuff done and like have good grades because you do have to maintain that if you want to like move on because that's just the type of school since it's mastery. Um, I would say that's difficult keeping with like saying like keeping up with the mastery and trying while still trying to go fast because you want to you want to learn all the stuff. But you're also like super excited. You're like, oh, when can I when can I get in these pathways and do what Mm -hmm. I actually really want to do? that that was my thing I really I really want to do um bodies so I was like oh I need to hurry up let me just get all my credits done (laughs) so 
I hear that from kiddos, from kiddos a lot, right? They're very, very excited to move from the um, freshman and sophomore year, sort of let's get all these credits taken care of and move into the pathway that I'm interested in. And, you know, a couple of things, Riley, um, that you just mentioned. So the first one is I'm thrilled to hear you say that the transition from eighth grade to ninth grade um, at your school was not as stressful as you thought it would be. But I would also like to point out, um, Riley, that I I think that part of the reason for that, and correct me if I'm wrong, please do, but I think part of that is you had a really solid foundation because the reality is, even as a freshman, you went into a fully accelerated program. And so, although, and again, I'm thrilled that it felt that way to you from the outside looking in, what I can tell you is the world's watching what you're doing and thinking, oh my goodness, that's a lot of stress on this child or any child participating in that program. And yet I think one of the reasons you said, well, wasn't so bad is because you were prepared for that yeah yeah I would definitely say for me I I was kind of one of the few because I knew some some of my friends they were like super super stressed and I was like guys too we've done this we've been through this (laughs) and but they were like still but I'm just kind of a chill person I don't like to stress too much Mm -hmm. but I definitely saw some kids like you said it was a very Mm -hmm. hard transition for them but yeah yeah, and it, and it can be. That's absolutely, uh, you know, a fair statement. So let's talk a little bit about the the pathway opportunity because I do hear that frequently from students. They are so excited to be able to get into that pathway moment. And Riley mentioned something called Bodies, which is the uh, Metro Early College High School pathway that's housed at the Past Innovation Lab. Uh, that's all about healthcare and healthcare sciences and career. And it's a whole array, and it's one of five programs, um, pathway programs that currently um, exist at the schools for the opportunity to be able to move into that. So just to give our listeners a bit of context when you're talking about bodies, we're we're talking about a program, (laughs) you know, not a horrific experience. So, uh, you know, in terms of those types of things. So, so Riley, you, you haven't started that program yet. And partially along the way, um, you know, in the late spring of your freshman year and certainly all now through your sophomore year in this expanded um, accelerated program, a global pandemic hit the world. So I know, yeah. Yes, it did. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about the experience um, with managing all of that inside of what largely um, is a virtual only environment. So share with us a little bit about that because last year before the pandemic um, hit and in the state of Ohio, most of our schools shut down mid-March and most of them um, did not reopen for the rest of the year. Um, Summer was not the summer we had. And then again, you started right back uh, where you left off um, mm-hmm. you know, in virtual and you're still going into that space. So, so let's start with how do you, how do you think the, and there's nothing that we can do about this. We, we have zero yeah. control over a global pandemic. Um, and I don't want to get into the nuts and bolts about the application of a particular school. I don't necessarily think that's fair, but I'm really, really more curious, Riley, about your experience just sort of as a student um, inside of the pandemic, there's there's a lot of chatter all over the media about you know kids being left behind, kids really struggling, and yet you hear stories of kids still succeeding, and you hear a variety of different sorts of things. And so I want to know, Riley, what's this been like for you? Well, um, it it has some parts have been difficult, but I would definitely say because. I would definitely say it hasn't been as tough as probably some of the other kids who are at different other schools or something, because Metro, we did have, we have never had snow days. We've always had virtual days, which is like, well, exactly like what we're doing now. So you got to practice long before the pandemic. Yes, long before. So like all through sixth grade, they would have us like snow days, which I did not particularly like. We (laughs) didn't actually get the day off. We still had to do homework, but they were like shorter classes, kind of like now. Mm -hmm. So that kind of, that definitely helped because I, we, I didn't feel as unprepared as I probably would have felt if I was like in a public school where this is all new to everyone. But I would definitely say like, like I said before, math has never been my strong suit. So I did 
um, find some challenges like learning particular topics such mm -hmm. as math over the computer because you don't have that hands-on and like um, the teacher can't really like if you don't have a camera if your programming doesn't have a camera they can't really see what your right. facial expressions are and like they can't tell kind of what you're thinking and like we do warm-ups and stuff so the teacher can't walk around and see your progress and be like oh you need to fix this or mm -hmm. something like that mm -hmm. so it's definitely lacking in the social aspects like how the one-on-one -on -one and like that type of thing but it hasn't been all bad because um because I guess you have more time for your homework so like they give us more work time for sure but I would definitely say it is a struggle like if you're not super determined or like um don't really know what you're doing yet and that kind of stuff to like get motivation that's mm -hmm. really the hard part you got to get motivation to actually want to do your work and do that kind of thing so that's really hard I'm not going to say that I'm always motivated because when it comes to math and other certain things I'm definitely not <laughs> <laughs> so I would definitely say that's probably one of the hardest parts but I feel like like you said you keep mentioning the foundation I feel like I really had a strong foundation so mm -hmm. I didn't feel as unprepared or unwilling to do this but I did not like I was kind of looking forward to like last year last summer like when it first all started I was kind of hoping we would go back to school because like you definitely lose like I feel like I'm losing some of my social skills like sure. I, like I'm like oh this is kind of awkward when I talk to people but I think it's gonna get better yeah well, we, we, we hope globally that it's definitely going to get better, right? <laughs> yeah. um, and that we're going to be, you know, moving through. But that's, that was a tough transition, you know, since we're talking about all these different sort of transition opportunities. And you're getting ready to gateway. And for our listeners, basically what that means is that Riley has, um, by the end of the spring, she will have completed the, the necessary high school um, graduation requirements in Ohio to be ready, deemed ready by both um, academically, socially, emotionally. There's many components that go into the determination around readiness. It's not just completing some credits. To say Riley's ready to move into this a career pathway experience, and in her case, the Bodies Program, which is about healthcare. And as part of that, to start taking her first collegiate credit. So let's talk a little bit about that because, um, you know, while you've demonstrated mastery and that you're ready to make this transition on paper, you've also, your transition, I would argue, is a little bit different than lots of kids because for the most part, you know, uh, of a two-year period of time where you would be prepping and getting ready for that, um, you weren't sitting back to, to what we were just talking about into in a, in a regular class. And, and Metro is a public school, um, so I just want to clarify um, that for our listeners. Metro is a public school, but it is a a public specialty school, a STEM school. Um, but that part's neither here nor there in the sense that, you know, your prep time has been during a global pandemic in a virtual world with all these handicaps in many ways. Um, and I've heard from numerous students that this self-motivation piece is it's tough, right? My parents are working. No one's here. I don't have that teacher standing there with me all the time. I don't even have my friends easy access, encouraging me to, to be better, to stick with it. And, and so how are you feeling about this upcoming transition? Hoping, of course, that next year we are fully in. We are, in fact, getting ready to move into some hybrid learning for the spring. So the hope is that for many students, they will get to at least get back on campus to some extent uh, remains to be seen what it will fully look like but how are you feeling about this upcoming transition um into the post-secondary piece of your high school experience Riley um this one I'm actually um very nervous about I'm excited but I'm also very nervous because it's not like you said, it's not high school or middle school where like the stakes aren't, I mean, they're not super high, but they're still pretty high. Like mm -hmm. you still want to do good and stuff like that. So I'm definitely very nervous about that. Also considering we're all online. I'm all online. They're 
we're all online right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that definitely makes it difficult to like prepare and like know all the things I need to do and make sure I have all my stuff. Like, like not even like credit wise, just make sure I have like all my ducks in a row. Yeah. And I'm definitely hoping that by the time um, fall semester comes that we'll be in person because I don't know if I'll be as successful as I hope um, if we're all online because I'm kind of, I'm very hands-on. That's Mm -hmm. one of the things I loved about like Innovators Club and that type of stuff and like the design process and that kind of thing. I'm very hands-on and I'm very one-on-one. I'm that type oriented. So because I like to make sure I know what I'm doing and I don't want to just like flail pretty much so I'm definitely hoping that we're going to be in spring I mean in person during fall or spring or whatever so that's definitely going to be tough if it's not for sure right right not like high school or anything yeah it has been tough it has definitely um, been tough and it's tough to be in one of the um the learning lab or the pathway programs you know all all virtual all room all remote um my, from our listeners, my son is also in the same school with Riley. Um, he is a year ahead of Riley. So he's a junior fully in his pathway program. And it's not easy, right? Because these programs are intended to have an awful lot of full on experiential opportunities out and about in the world, um, experiencing the field or the career that you're, you're tapping into. And they're also intended to be very, very hands-on um, and very, very collaborative. And so although so um, that it's all been achieved in the virtual <laughs> environment. Um, it's definitely not the way you would choose um, to do it for most for most folks. So Riley, as we sort of wrap up the program um, here, you know, as as the powers that be out in the world, whether they be parents or teachers or community leaders, policy makers, thinking about some of the long-term impacts, both positive and negative, because there's we, we talk a lot about the whole virtual learning and the pandemic and how uh, the, the negative impacts, and there are many, many of them, but it hasn't entirely been all negative because there have in fact been some really positive um, innovations that are coming from Mm -hmm. everybody's school. You know, teachers and administrators are working really, really hard to figure out how to do learning differently um, in that environment. And we recognize that there are many students all um, across the U.S. and around the world that just virtual hasn't worked at all because of access. And that's a whole nother conversation uh, that we're going to have on the program. But, but Riley, if you were to sort of step back and say, what's one big giant takeaway that was positive for you um, as part of this sort of pandemic transition that you never planned to be part of, what, <laughs> what might one of those positive attributes be? Because we want to end the conversation talking about those positive outcomes. What do you think? Um, absolutely. Well, it's definitely... Um, <laughs> it's there it, I'm not there it is not all been bad um the I would say I really liked having um a lot of time and I really think that the teachers who are teaching right now all teachers have been very helpful and by like opening themselves and making them making it so students can contact them so I would definitely say that it's a super positive thing because even in school I don't think they were as contactable or as willingly wanting to help as they are now so I would say everyone's attitudes being changed would definitely be a positive thing yeah absolutely that's good to hear that you know that that was such a positive uh, impact so Riley I want to thank you very much for spending a few minutes with us today to have this conversation and share with us a little bit about your k-12 journey your your sets of transitions um, since since middle school and sort of the impact of that journey has had on you and um, we wish you the very best of luck making it through the rest of this academic year as you work towards your gateway in the spring. So thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me.